Well, hello and welcome. Lots of exciting things happening today. I will be doing a brief review of this Lamy Studio. Uh, I'll also be swapping the nib on this pen out with a stub nib, which I just got. And we'll be inking it up with a Schaefer ink, which I also just uh, purchased. I didn't even know that this ink existed. So essentially we'll be taking a closer look at the pen. We'll be doing a nib exchange. Uh, we'll be unboxing this ink, trying it out for the first time, and I'll be doing a writing sample with a pen as well. So, lots of things to stick around for. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to my channel. Okay, let's get started. Alright, let's have a closer look at the pen. This is the Lamy Studio. I have it in a olive green, which is a color I really enjoy. And it's got a very smooth, sort of velvety texture to it. It's a sort of a matte uh, green, which I, I really like. Um, I would describe the design of this pen as quite modern. Um, it's not flashy in any way, but it, it does stand out a bit. The color, I think, is uh, not that usual, but I think it works very well on this pen. In, in terms of branding on this pen, we only have Lamy uh, on the cap right there and nothing else. Finial at the top, it's really just this flat uh, chrome section and at the bottom as well, just flat chrome section. Although at the bottom you find that there are some, uh, there's a, um, an edge to this. And what that is for, I didn't realize this initially, but the cap posts and it clips onto uh, that part of the pen. So clips into place and then it's very securely posted, which is very nice. I like that things are functional on the pen, that it's, it's not just there for, any re for no reason at all. Uh, it's got a function and the cap, it's a snap cap and it closes with a very satisfying click. There you go. The clip is, I think, what is called a helicopter clip. It's got this sort of twist to it. It starts out uh, flat at the top and then it sort of twists. Uh, it's nice and springy and it's, it's quite tight, but not overly so, so you won't have any issue with, um, with using it. It's very, very functional. Um, very nice, I think, just just the way that it should be, it will work. The pin, we uncap the pin and it reveals a shiny chrome section. Now I don't know if how many of you have pins with a chrome section. I'm not particularly a fan of this. I always imagine that this is going to be slippery and it's going to attract fingerprints and it's going to scratch. And I don't know what your experience is like with this kind of pen so uh, let me know in the comments whether you have a pen like this and what your experience is like with it. The section slopes somewhat towards the nib. Um, it's got a sort of a uh, an, an edge there to prevent your fingers from, from slipping uh, onto the nib. The section is um, it's not too narrow it's just really comfortable it's also long enough so it provides a very nice grip and from the section onto the barrel, there's a slight step, but it's not sharp at all. You can barely feel it when you hold the pen. I, I really don't feel that at all. It's as if it just disappears. Also, when the pen is capped, the, there's no transition really from the, from the cap to the barrel. It's really, really smooth. Um, you can barely see that line where uh, the cap transitions to the barrel. So that's very nice. Well designed and well built, really well put together, which is nice about this uh, about this pen. The nib is a very standard uh, Lamy nib. Um, you find these on the Lamy Safaris as well, so they are interchangeable. And I'm going to uh, attempt to swap out this nib with a different one. I don't do this very often, so this is new for me as well the barrel unscrews and this is it's got a plastic insert and so this is plastic on plastic threads and it is so smooth you can see that it al 
almost unscrews by itself. So really, really comfortable. I've got a converter um, in this one, a Lamy converter, and these are really nice. They provide a good uh, capacity for ink and they just work. These things are just, it's really comfortable and they, they hold a good amount of ink. So as far as the pen is concerned in terms of the design, uh, there you have it, very modern design, very well designed. Uh, it's not um, it's not flashy, but it's modern enough that I think it will catch the eye to some extent. Definitely noticeable. Um, so that's, that's very nice. Build quality on this pen, um, I also feel is really, really good. There is nothing on this pen that I find to be cheap or to feel cheap or flimsy or nothing is loose in any way it's really well built um, i think this is a good quality pen in terms of design and build quality um, really really nice now i said that i was going to um, swap the nib out and these nibs um, they're supposed to be quite easy to swap out and we're going to try that i ordered a, uh, a stub nib for the spin and it came in this nice little container i don't know if this is meant for lamy it, it well there's some branding there so it says lamy feels like this would have been like a little uh, jewelry uh, container maybe but it's got a nice plastic uh, uh, cardboard uh, box in there and the nib inside so this is a 1.1 stub this is really nice the previous times that i ordered nibs i just got them essentially wrapped in plastic and this is what they what they came like so this is really nice because now i can put all my nibs in here so really nice that i got this uh, there we go 1.1 stub nib and let's try and swap this out right this is not so easy to do with the camera in the way but i'll do my best now something i've seen people do with these pens is essentially use the cap to press down on the nib and then just pull back because these these nibs are supposed to um, remove quite easily and let me just see if i just it's not going to it's not that loose so it's not going to come off that easily so this this is the one trick i've seen people do is to hold it down with a cap and then pull back on the pen i don't really like this method i feel like i could damage the nib so perhaps let me just see slight pull no i'm not crazy about this idea and i, I don't want to damage my nib at all so the other thing that I've seen people do is essentially use some solo tape, which we will try out. And essentially what we can do is we put the tape over the nib, just get it on there, and then just pull and hopefully, right, we remove the section with the nib that we got but the nib itself seems to be quite stuck on there does not want to voluntarily come off let me just put the pen out of the way there so I'm going to, I'm going to try again put the tape on the nib and try and pull it off like that and success now we just want to be sure that there's no from the tape that there's no glue on the nib and it could be a little bit but I'll just just rub that off with my fingers now this is a bald nib something that is quite visible here actually is the the space between the tines there and that is partly what makes this a very wet nib and uh, I, f I find the Lamy nibs to be rather inconsistent, uh, unfortunately. Um, I have a few medium nibs and I find that they all write very differently, which is very different from, let's say, my 
um, pilot metropolitans, which I have between me and my wife, I have four of them, uh, all medium, and they write incredibly consistently. So the nib just slides back on. So let's just see. There we go. Need to apply a little bit of pressure, but it's on there. And this just goes back into the section. Now I just need to see if it has to go back in there if there's a specific place where it goes back in, but I can't see anything. So I think I think it really just slides in any way that you can. Oh, it's going in very tight. Not crazy about that. Not crazy about that at all. Let me just see if we can... Oh, yes, it, it has a very particular way that it fits in to the section. You have to find it. So you have to be careful. I almost did something I shouldn't and it clicks in place you see someone like me have to be very careful with these things all right i don't know if we captured all of that but in any case we swapped the nib successfully whether it's going to write is a whole nother story but um, let's see what we can do about that but first i'm just going to put the pen aside i want to have a closer look at this ink all right let's have a closer look at this ink this is a Schaefer ink it's green the name of the ink is well I don't know if I'm going to pronounce that right it looks like very Verdi something to that effect if I'm pronouncing it wrong please let me know in the comments now usually the Schaefer inks that I find oh, well first of all if you can find them because that's the first problem with Schaefer inks Schaefer doesn't do a very good job of uh, making the inks available you have to really struggle to find them I didn't even know that these inks existed I found them by accident I got two of them there's a green one and a blue one and I will show you the blue one um, another time so we're going to open up this ink let me break the seal on it there we go put that out of the way it doesn't want to open so easily so we'll, we'll help it out there we go I want to tear the box. All right. And let's see what we have. Oh, I see. So this is part of. I have to break the seal at the bottom as well. Get this loose here on both sides. They really make sure that this is going nowhere unless you intend for it to come out of the box. Now it should work. Here we go. And this is a much nicer presentation than I usually find on my Schaefer inks. Normally they've just got this transparent little plastic container with a bottle inside and this is much nicer we have some paperwork which looks like it shows you how to fill the pen etc I think we'll manage very nice very nice box and we have the ink says Schaefer this is a 30 ml bottle very Verdi is the name of the ink and that's what we have so if we open the bottle it 
if we can open the bottle. Yes, it does open with some considerable force. We find inside a very interesting shaped bottle. I'm not sure what those what that is meant for. But anyway, we are not going to dwell on that too much. We can always have a look at that later on. We're going to ink up this pen and do a proper writing sample. We are sampling the ink as well as a new nib. So, pen goes in. We draw up some ink. I'm not going to fill it up. Uh, I can always do that a bit later on. Just wipe it down. And first thing to do would be to put the bottle out of the way. Don't want an open bottle where something can happen and go wrong. There we go. And we're ready to do a writing sample. So for the writing sample today we're using Rhodia.pad. This is a A5 pad and it's brand new. First time using it with this pen and with this ink. Right, so first time using this nib as well as the ink. Here we go. So this is the Lamy Studio. And this is what I said about the nibs, that they are incredibly inconsistent and right off the bat this nib is so scratchy. This is a 1.1 stub nib. You can probably hear that. It does not impress at all. And the ink is Schaefer, very hard. Not too wet, uh, not particularly dry either, seems fine. Right, so the writing experience with this nib is not, not great. Um, I will definitely have a closer look at the nib and see if I can find out why it's somewhat scratchy. It's not the greatest. And it's a pity because I do have a 1.1 1 
Lomi stub nip on my Lomi Vista. And the writing experience with that nip is just absolutely phenomenal. But this is what I'm talking about when I say Lomi nibs are inconsistent. My first Lomi was a Safari and the nib on that pen was absolutely horrible. So much so that, remember it was my first Lomi, I essentially threw the pen in the drawer and it stayed there for years um, until someone suggested I try another nib, which I did, ordered another medium nib and the pen wrote really, really well and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I've got a few medium nibs and although only one of them um, is really, really bad, um, none of the medium nibs are the same. It's, they're just not consistent. I've got a bold nib, which is really great, and now two stop nibs, and this one is scratching. And I don't particularly like having to fix something that I just purchased. So that, that for me is not a great start. Um, but I would say the nib is not horrible. But um, because I have the other one, because I have experience writing with a nib like this, I know that it can be better. So it's, a, it's disappointing that it's not. Maybe just a word on the ink. Um, this is a really nice green. I think I'll be using it for a while. It, it looks really good. It's, it's not too light, it's not too dark. Um, I think it's a nice color. I definitely want to <clears throat> write a bit more with this nib to test it out and see what's going on with it. It doesn't feel too bad, but like I say, because I know what it actually can feel like, um, it's, it's a little bit disappointing. The pen though, not talking about the nib, but the pen I think is a really excellent pen. It's a really good quality. It's a pity about the Lamy nibs being so inconsistent because the pens are generally really, really good quality. And this one is no exception. This is a really good quality pen. Very nice design, excellent bolt quality. Um, it's got a good weight to it as well. It's a metal pen. Um, so, it, but it's not heavy. It just feels really, really comfortable. You you can post it, but you don't need to post it. It's, it's actually quite, um, it's actually quite large, you know, for me in any case. So, great pen, uh, not so great nib, but great pen, great ink. Um, again, I invite you to uh, subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content, uh, like the video if it was, uh, if you enjoyed it, and um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Let's try to have a closer look at what this nib does.